how how are we going to make Nigeria work? First and foremost is that we have to end the award of inflated government contracts. I agree with you that Nigeria should not be about paper. And that's why just before you ask me your question, I was luckily telling you that the next president of Nigeria must be somebody who is practically ready to micromanage Nigeria. How many people did you ever hear coming to speak specifically that I'm going to stop the award of inflated government contracts? You've never heard. Now, there is no use giving too much credit to myself. I'll leave you to judge from what you hear from me. But believe you me, this is different from what you know. When Buhari said he was going to fight corruption, how? If you ask Buhari now, how is corruption in Nigeria done? It's triple. He does not even, no, no, how does it occur? How does it happen? He, I don't believe he even knows. Right now, what we need in Nigeria are better builders, better mechanics, better tradesmen, and so on and so forth from the public side. And of course, what we need in Nigeria is to make the best use of our expatriates who are in... The best use of our expatriates whom you find from Cambridge, Oxford, Harvard, in every leading university in Nigeria, and I remain to be corrected, sorry, in Europe and America and Canada. Among the top 10 professors there is a Nigerian. Among the top 10 surgeons in <coughs> every hospital in Europe and America and Canada, there is a Nigerian. When I started my PhD in Westminster in 1997, the highest paid individual was not the vice chancellor. It was a Nigerian director of the IT, head of IT department there. They had to pay him that much to do. It is tapping from our Nigerian resources abroad, sending in technology, sending in know-how and the rest. But if you think we should develop technologies Technology does not develop in a vacuum. What we have is a vacuum. You improve the security in Nigeria and you attract investment in such a way that uh, every month you have given confidence to Nigerian diaspora that they are getting between 1.5 to 2% on deposits here. Okay, Nigeria is paying you 4%, which is 100% of 2%, the best they are getting. Or you can release equity from a property you finished mortgaging at 3% and then send it to Nigeria and be getting 6% on deposit. That is 100%. This I will use to flood Nigerian banks with lendable funds. So I, when I told you that everything is linked to nearly everything, it's like a very complex machine. That's what I mean. And when you have Nigerian banks ready and able to lend those kind of uh, funds, then you go back to Nigeria. If you want to set up a dental practice, for example, now that, for example, you need to begin with an initial capital outlay of 50 million, my vision for Nigeria is that you don't have to spend that 50 million. You can start with 5 million naira. You rent the office space. Instead of paying for two years, we would have changed the system. You sign the two-year contract and be paying. Because if your check bounces, you're in trouble. It's a criminal offense then. And then you can hire purchase everything from the dental equipment all the way to your computers, to the vehicle, to the furniture and everything. Then you have lots of people come back to Nigeria. You've made setting up businesses and running businesses a lot easier.
to start and they pay the rest as they move along and don't forget one fundamental issue you have released more money into people's pockets households can now afford housing they can afford better feeding better clothing better entertainment education and everything and like i keep saying my ground zero is the police constable a police constable who is a family of two himself and the wife what can 100000 naira do for him it can pay a mortgage so you people will get busy the children can go to school that money is going into the private sector you're talking of hundreds of thousands millions of people like him who hundreds of thousand is coming clean and they're not keeping it for for themselves it's going into the economy right now you don't want to see how police constables are living dormitories is a gl glorification of the conditions in which they live and what did i say nothing happens so quickly so drastic overnight and that is how you know leaders that mean business and leaders that don't mean business i'm trying to give some humanity back to your security operatives from the police constable to the army private to the customs officer to the immigration officer to the public servant who is carrying files from desk to desk teacher in front of pupils teacher and lecturer in front of students nurse who welcomes uh, the, um, patients into hospitals so on and so forth give some humanity back to them redirect their loyalty to their nation and to their profession in that way the police constable will not collect bribe 15 error from the on the streets use heavily heavily used technology where we have to move away from uh, the barbaric situation where you see uh, an officer not even rank and file of the police standing in front of a car blocking the car hey, we have to move give some humanity back to people the same thing with road safety and all that this is you can use technology to stop that and very cheap also very very cheap if you have every sim card registered including biometrics and voice i wonder who would be so dumb to negotiate ransom on phone technology for you i'm talking of a situation where you have every police station in nigeria you have our unemployed youth all they need is a laptop and a printer card printer working three shifts a day eight 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 hours and you give 30 days for all nigerians to have compulsory national id card you have wiped about one million unemployed youth from the market and they will continue to live decent lives simple use of technology and you cannot get into public transport you cannot go into malls or anything of that sort you cannot go into a hotel you cannot go into hospitals without being identified i want you to tell me who will come out on the road from one community to go and kill others in another community when they know they are identified because it's simple logic the dpo has a list of all those who are local within so if you kill me 100 citizens in this place it's easy i have a data set i know where to start working from right now it's a lawless society because it's everybody for everybody you can come out from niger republic you can come out from sudan you can come out from anywhere go into the middle of nigeria commit any crime nothing happens this is still the country that you can drive a car from the day you get it till the day you throw it away without number plate nobody cares all these things have to be stopped and it has to come from the top very simple technologies very very simple ones it's a matter of mindset they will be done